Sigma notation or summation notation. In the last video, we learned how to solve these questions, but I have a faster way. It's not only faster, but it's very useful at the end of your question to be able to check your answers. So let's learn how to do it. Okay, so now I want to do a quick recap before we get into the calculator video. We have an upper limit and a lower limit. But as you may notice, I have represented our lower limit as X instead of R. Remember, I said it can be any letter as long as it's stated in the question, you follow that. But I said X in this question because there's an X in our calculator, as you'll see right now. So if you haven't already, go look at my Sigma notation video and now we'll get into this one. So just for the record, in this video, we're going to be using the Casio FX991EX called the ClassWiz. Okay, so the first question, if we look at it, we can see that the upper limit is 11 and the lower limit is 1 and the function is r. But for the calculator purposes, we're going to think of r as x because that's what we see in the calculator, that's what they use. But remember, in your exam, it can be any variable. You just have to know that in the calculator, we're going to use x. So now we're going to actually type it in the calculator. So we get our sigma notation first, r is going to be represented by x, our starting value is 1, and our ending value or upper limit is 11. And now we press equal, the equal sign, to get the result, which is 66. Now on to the second question. In this question, remember in our last video, we said that when r is not equal to 1 or when the starting value is not equal to 1, it's a special case. However, there's none of that when it comes to the calculator. You can simply type the value in. So let's do that now. So in this one, starting value we know is 10. Okay, well, first we have to type in our function, which will just be x. The starting value is 10. And the ending value is 51. So now we just press the equal sign to get our answer, 1,281. Now onto the third question. Now this one, just like the second question, is a special case where the starting value or lower limit is not equal to 1. It's equal to 11 and the lower limit and the upper limit, sorry, is equal to 21. So we also need to notice that the function is r cubed. So we represent that on the calculator as x cubed, as you'll see now. So let's get our sigma notation. We type in x cubed. Our lower limit is 11 and our upper limit is 21. We press the equal sign to get our result, 50,336. So yes, that's how we do it. Now onto our final question, which happens to be a past paper question. And it's from 2008 rest of region, 2008 ROR. So let's have a look at it. You'll notice that we did this in our last video. It's our last question. So instead of solving it mechanically, we're going to type it in the calculator. But to make our lives a bit easier, we're going to expand the brackets. So all we're going to do is put r by r and r by 1. So it'll be equal to r squared plus r. And in the calculator, we're going to type in x squared plus x. Okay, so that's how we're going to type it in with our lower limit as 31 and our upper limit as 50. So let's do that. So we get the sigma notation on the calculator like this, how I showed you before. Now we're going to type in our function x squared plus x. Then we're going to put in our lower limit, which is 21, sorry, 31. And our upper limit as 50. And we're going to press equal to get our result, our answer, our final value, 34,280. So I want you to remember, yes, this is easy. Yes, it's a trick. But you must show all your working to get full marks on your exam. There you have it. That's how you use your calculator to solve a question involving sigma notation or summation notation. 